Today on the spot, we got demos of Lost Planet 2 and Blade Kitten and check in with what's new this week on PlayStation Network and recap the top 10 moments from the IGF Awards from GDC last week. Today on the spot. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Saturday episode of Today on the Spot. I'm Brian Eckberg and this is Sophia Tong. Sophia, how's your March Madness bracket going? The basketball thing? Yes, the basketball thing. You know, it's March Madness, college basketball tournament, 614, somebody's gonna be a crown champion. Oh, yeah, don't, not you don't, following. You realize that, Sophia, you are a CBS employee and I think it's in your contract somewhere that you have to fill out a bracket every year. I don't think I got the memo. Maybe, maybe you're ex an exception because you're from Canada. Am I fired? Yeah, you're fired. Anyway, uh, we've got a great show for you guys today. Uh, you saw at the top, we got a whole bunch of games. In addition, we have some Resonance of Fate t-shirts we're going to be giving away with trivia at the end. These are a little small. If I were to be wearing these, I'd look like a sausage stuffed in saran wrap, but maybe they'll fit you or your <laughs> uncle or your or nephew nobody. or nobody. Maybe they'll fit your dog. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, we have the trivia questions at the end and we'll get to that. But first, let's get to the news, catch you up on all of the headlines. Check it out. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot news update for Saturday, March 20th. I'm Tor Thorson. Downloadable content is all the rage these days, and this week DLC packs are two top titles were given firm release dates. First up, BioWare has dated the Firewalker pack for its triple platinum hit Mass Effect 2. Due out on March 23rd, i.e. Tuesday, the expansion will add five new missions featuring the all-new Hammerhead Heavy Assault Vehicle. The high-speed, tank-like contraption will let players roam the surface of planets, much like the Mako ATV did in the first Mass Effect. And given the massive overhaul which Bioware gave the original game's formula, there's a good chance the Hammerhead won't be as boring, pointless, or clumsy as the Mako was. Seriously though, that thing sucked hard. How much for the Firewalker pack, you ask? The add-on is free if you bought Mass Effect 2 and activated the Cerberus Network, the in-game DLC delivery system. If you bought the game used, you'll have to pay $15 to get access to the Cerberus network, which has provided other items like the Arc Projector Gun and the party member Zaid Masani. By now, thousands of PlayStation 3 owners have solved the Origami Killer case at the center of Heavy Rain. However, that isn't stopping Sony Computer Entertainment from prepping additional story content for the critically acclaimed game. Today, the publisher announced the first downloadable content pack for Heavy Rain will arrive on April 1st. The expansion will cost $5 and, like the game, is rated M for Mature. The first chapter of the Heavy Rain Chronicles, the Taxidermist DLC pack, provides some new background on one of the game's main character, reporter Madison Page. Hey, I went to college in Madison! It chronicles one of the early investigations that put her on the trail of the Origami Killer, the serial killer who bedevils the various characters players control throughout the course of the game. I mean, Origami? Taxidermy? Seriously? What's next, the Quilting Club Killer? Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for Saturday, March 20th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. It's a segment we get more requests for every week than any of the others. Okay, I just made that up, but it is this week on PlayStation Network. This week on the PlayStation Network. First up in downloadable games, we check out Groovin' Blocks. Groovin' Blocks is a puzzle game set to hot musical beats. Match up three or more gems and watch them explode. Time your explosions to the musical beat and double your multipliers to increase your score. Solve puzzles with your friends in local co-op or head-to-head -head modes. Groovin' Blocks is yours for $9.99. Next up, Sam and Max are back for Season 3 and Sam and Max The Devil's Playhouse. In this season, we discover Max has some new psychic abilities which allow him to teleport using a telephone and also the ability to change himself into different objects. Then we're introduced to a new character in the Sam and Max series, General Skunkape. Episode 1 is available now, so order the whole five-episode season of Sam and Max The Devil's Playhouse for $29.99. In the game demos department, we find Brain Challenge. Boost your brain and relieve stress through 25 visual, memory, logic, math, and focus minigames. Challenge up to three of your friends to a multiplayer card game and see whose brain reigns supreme. Moving over to game add-ons, we find the new Aliens vs Predator multiplayer swarm map pack. Adding new maps such as a dockyard on the waters of BG-386, a map for the original site of the Wayland yutani colony, a power facility at Freya's Prospect, and the Xenomorph Hive, you're sure to find a chest-bursting good time. Pick up the Aliens vs Predator map pack for $6.99. In the expansion for Dragon Age Origins, Awakenings, you find yourself a newly appointed commander of the Grey Wardens. 
You must rebuild your shattered stronghold, recruit new wardens to the cause, and defeat the new leader of the Darkspawn. Dragon Age Origins Awakenings is yours for $39.99. Dragon Ball friends, get ready for some fresh DLC heading to the PSN this week. Dragon Ball Raging Blast Ultimate Warriors Pack 2 features such characters as Majin, Vegeta, Frieza, Android 17, Android 18, and Cell. This map pack will cost you nothing. It's free! And Need for Speed Shift has added its new exotic racing series available for download. This pack introduces seven new cars, including the McLaren MP4 12C and the legendary BMW M1. Enjoy over 50 exciting new events that have also been created for these cars and are up to 125 points worth of trophies for undertaking the various new challenges. Grab the exotic racing series for $9.99 and the game videos department and find the newest episodes of The Tester. With only six gamers left, it's time for them to take a Buzz-themed quiz challenge, testing their mastery of all things PlayStation. We also find new trailers for SOCOM 4, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier, Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands, Army of Two The 40th Day, and three new videos for MLB The Show, including the launch trailer. And new to the PSP this week, we find Patchwork Heroes. The fate of the city is in your hands. Act quickly in 30 levels to save the cities from giant looming warships in this fun action game. Get some Patchwork Heroes for $9.99. The Red Star is set in a Russian-inspired parallel universe. Thrust you in a gritty futuristic world of chaotic warfare, industrial technology, and arcane magic. The Red Star is yours for $14.99. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to check GameSpot.com for more updates, and we'll see you next Saturday for another This Week on the PlayStation Network. Okay, I know that was This Week on PlayStation Network, and we usually do This Week on PC, but unfortunately, the man who brings you This Week on PC, Marco Martinez, is indisposed. Really? Is he in Mexico? He's What? He's not in Mexico. He's playing the NCAA men's basketball. What does that mean? Is he in Mexico? I thought he was gone when on vacation. No, if he, he goes to vacation on the sun. Oh. That's how he gets his tan. I haven't been keeping up with Marco. No, well, you can't keep up with Marco because he runs at light speed. Anyway, This Week on PC will be back soon. Sophia, what you got? Well, let's check in with Ricardo Torres and see what's happening in Lost Planet 2 in our daily demo coming up next. Hey everybody, it's Ricardo and I am sitting here with Ryan McDougall from Capcom who has brought us a special treat. He brought us Lost Planet 2, but it's something all new, right? That's exactly right. So this is something we haven't shown before. This is the fourth of the six episodes in the game. This is midway through that episode, chapter three. Uh, you start out this episode in a prison cell, so you're going to be first broken out by this double agent. You're going to be trying to, at this point, fight back against the same people that captured you. So your goal here is to storm this beach, you land on these watercraft, you take up to the shore, and then your goal is to take over the pirate fortress that's right over the hill. This so part of the... Yep. Now, the whole storming bit seems to be a bit challenging because he's weighed down by this enormous weapon he's got on. What is he... What he's actually carrying around there is what we call a battle suit. It's a special type of vital suit. Most of the vital suits you're going to see are these large walkers. This one is more of a personal combat uh, solution. So it's, it's going to wrap right around you and it's going to power you up. It's going to essentially get you an extra health bar uh, and, and it's going to use your thermal energy to help protect you. Now, story-wise, you know, this, this game is kind of a sequel to the first game, picks up after it, uh, but you're following different groups of pirates, right? So, kind of where are we right now? Like, who are we playing as and why are we killing other pirates? That's exactly right. So, at this point in the game, you're actually playing as an offshoot of the Nevik Marines, and the people you're fighting against are the main core of that Nevik army. So, what you're trying to do is actually, you're rebelling against your overlords and your commanders, and you're taking a moral position that you need to fight against what's going on in this world. So this is sort of an elite group of, uh, of soldiers who decided that they need to take things into their own hands and fight against the, uh, the tyrannical Nevik system. Now, now that we've, we're doing these data posts right now, mm -hmm. uh, once that whole process is complete, then we're going to own this area. Exactly. So there's four or five data posts, and you can track them in the top left of the screen there. Once the player has taken over all of those data posts, it, uh, it identifies that they've taken over this area. And at that point, instead of attacking it, you're then going to go to a defense. At that point, waves of enemy reinforcements will try to take over this pirate base. And at that point, you're going to be fighting to, to hold it down. There's turrets um, and a couple of different good defensive positions that Brian will be able to use to help uh, stave off those enemies. 
Very nice. And so now we basically switch to defense. Exactly. You can see that helicopter coming in there. That's called an Osprey. There's going to be waves and waves of those as they come towards them. And you're pretty much limited to what you've got in, in the base. There is no helicopter jacking in the game, as much as we'd like to, right? Uh, it, I believe that's the case. In, in this game, we're not going to be able to pilot the helicopters, but some of the vital suits themselves will be able to actually fly, glide, and, and dodge left and right. Um, there are more vital suits in the base as well, uh, and so th there's plenty of opportunity here to really defend exactly how you want to defend. And in this particular level, are we going to see a boss fight, or is this kind of like your boss experience, just bending everybody off? So this chapter, which is the third chapter of the episode, uh, will culminate in this sort of massive horde fight, um, and not a traditional boss fight, but later in the uh, episode, you'll have a traditional boss fight. And we'll see massive acre massive vital suits that you'll be fighting against as well. And then just to be clear, this is basically a single player game that we're watching right now. Um, will you be able to do this cooperatively as well? Yes. Uh, the entire campaign mode, what we used to always call single player, is, uh, is, is now being called campaign mode because everything is built for four players. We're showing off single player with three AI partners. You can have as many AI partners as you want, one to th uh, zero to three, or you can jump on with a, uh, as many human friends as, as you can muster. Um, additionally, what we've uh, just recently announced is the split screen offline co-op that will be in the game. You'll be able to play through the entire campaign split screen with a buddy right there on one console. Our uh, next obvious question is, when can we get our hands on this thing and what platforms? So this will be coming to Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 mid-May 2010. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there you go. That is your look at Lost Planet 2, new level, fighting on the beach, blowing up mechs, kind of what you want to do. Um, look for more on the game very soon. Well, our next segment, we have a demo of Blade Kitten, so let's check it out. <laughs> Hey everyone, Sophia here, and we have our daily demo today, and I'm joined by Steve Stamatiadis, coming all the way from Australia from Chrome Studios. Yep, thanks. Thanks for coming, and you're probably a little jet-lagged. Yeah, it's based out, yes. <laughs> yeah. So you have Blade Kitten for us. Now tell us about Blade Kitten. Well, Blade Kitten started out as an uh, uh, online webcomic. Well, all the Blade comics are online. Um, which I created about seven years ago, and it's an action story about a pig-head cat girl bounty hunter. Yes, with I her, see that. <laughs> with a floating sword and alien sidekick. And the game is a uh, prequel of sorts to the comic, mm -hmm. so that you can see new elements of this, the game, the character world, all that cool, cool stuff. All right, let's just jump in and see what she can do. Kid's obviously very acrobatic and can run around, and mm -hmm. the focus on gameplay is like flowing exploration. So you can pretty much climb on any surface uh, automatically, you don't have to press weird combo buttons, it's just if you want to jump on a ceiling you just push up towards the ceiling and climb. Um, again, one of the games about exploration so we've got tons of environments for you to check out that use the that uh, acrobatic gameplay. Mm -hmm. Combat's kept nice and, I wouldn't say simple, but straightforward. You, you press one button to attack up close and you've got another button to shoot the, the magical floating sword yeah. out in the distance. So you've got a range attack, so you've got different strategies of playing. Of Some enemies are close enemies, some enemies are ranged enemies, so you can experiment that way. So the sword just kind of follows you around and just attacks when you tell it to? Has yeah. a mind of its own a little bit? I think of it like a, a about, as, about as smart as a pit bull terrier. <laughs> <laughs> but about as aggressive as that, so it's, you know, it's, it's tough and it's there to attack things. It's like a 2D platformer exploration. Very much a classic uh, arcade yeah. style 2D exploration game, along the lines of Strider or your Castlevania. Mm -hmm. uh, Story-wise, it's very the game's uh, levels are very linear, as yeah. in, well, so the progression of levels is linear. You go through, but each level is giant-sized. So just to run through a level, and if you go from point A to point B, which is the get through the story part of the game, mm -hmm. that's about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. But if you want to explore the game, actually you know, find all the, the secrets and the collectibles, then you're looking at maybe uh, a good 45 minutes to an hour on some of those levels. So you are collecting these little golden or different colored... Yeah, the little, the, uh, little icons are Hex, which okay. is a, the unit of money in the um, Blade Kitten universe. And as you see, she can jump around, just moving around is effortless for her. That's, yeah. that's one of the key elements in the game, it's just getting there and going where you want to go. What about customization? Like, do you have other weapon options and like clothing options? We have options to upgrade the blade as you go through the game. But obviously, all that lovely hex you collect goes towards yeah. being able to buy stuff in the store. Um, so you can buy 
uh, four different blades in the first episode, and then we've got a few more in the second one. You can also use the money to buy different costumes for Kit, which are purely visual, but it looks cool anyway. <laughs> So you want to jump ahead and show another part of the game? Yeah, we should show them the boss battles or the action moments, really, as it is. All right, let's skip ahead to that. So this is the uh, giant monster chasing you down <laughs> level. Uh, obviously, your sword's not really much use against this thing, so it's pretty much... I'm trying to get for, out for of the way. For things, <laughs> run away. I think that's actually the level description, too. So for love of everything, run. Run? Okay. And I, I saw this little, like, guy that follows you around. Like, who's he? That's Skiffy Kitsa, alien mascot sidekick that she's, she meets up with in this game. Um, this guy looks pissed. <laughs> well, you know, the math like that. Oh. And you said um, this is one of a couple of boss fights? Yeah, we have a, a bunch of mini boss fights in the mm -hmm. game. Uh, this is, I consider this more of like an action moment. It's sort mm -hmm. of punctuates the game about halfway through as you find a bit, information, a bit more information about one of the main characters and sort of unreal, it reveals more of the story. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, a, sort of an action, I guess, I can't say a breather, it's more like you don't take a breath, but. Kind of changes up the pace a little yeah. bit. All right. So is he just gonna tear down this entire <laughs> He's just city? gonna rampage through the building. Okay, and you can't do anything about it, pretty much just run? Just run. Sounds good. All right, exciting. Now, when does the game come out and what platform? Blade Kid comes out in spring on the PlayStation Network. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. And there's our look at Blade Kitten. Now on with the rest of the show. Coming up next, we have the top 10 moments from the IGF Awards from last week at GDC. So let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 10th Annual Game Developers Choice Awards. So I actually have some slides. And so I wanted to touch really briefly on that and, and answer some of these questions that are in the minds of our, of our fans about what we're going to do. So I'm going to go and talk about that next. Okay, my, this isn't working. Uh, that's, that's what I get for working at Microsoft. Uh, um, and the first ever choice award for best new social online game goes to Farmville. Indie folks, come show us what you can do. And if you're interested in making your own mark, Please come join us. Thank you so much. So in the end, I think that you could take John Carmack and stack him up against any random person in kind of a true deathmatch style <laughs> and say, which of these people had a more significant impact on computer gaming, <laughs> graphics technology, <laughs> online communities, user-generated content, and especially aerospace engineering? It really has been an amazing couple of decades that I've been working in gaming here. And I've managed to successfully avoid Peter principling myself into management, so I do still come in and I write code at work every single day, just like I always have. <laughs> I am more excited about being in the game industry right now than I probably have been in my entire career. Hi, we're Mega64. This year's IGF Nuovo Award goes to Tuning. And the winner of the Choice Award for Best Audio is Uncharted 2. And the Best Writing Award goes to Uncharted 2. Uh, and the winner of the award for Best Visual Arts is Uncharted 2. Best Game Design, Batman Arkham Asylum.
Thanks. Uh, wow, thanks for not giving it to Uncharted 2. I was a little worried, actually. Um, okay. Honest, honestly, our, our first thought that this was that this was a trap. And that uh, as soon as we got up here, we would hear like the click of a deadbolt, and you guys would all just start moving in on us slowly with makeshift weapons. Um, but we, uh, we honestly appreciate it. Finally, a special thanks to media sponsor GameSpot.com. They are providing the first ever live digital streaming of the awards. Hi, Internet. I like turtles. All right, there you go. There's your demo of Blade Kitten. We'll reach the end of the show, and we have these shirts to give away, Sophia. Yeah, and trivia time. It's trivia time for Resonance of Fate t-shirts. You've got a question, I believe? I do. And the question is, who is a voice actor in the Japanese and English version for the character Zephyr? If you have the answer, be sure to enter it in our trivia module on the side of the page, or you can email us on onthespot at gamespot.com. Brian, what, what are you doing? I just wanted to see. I think it fits. I think it fits all right. Can you, you breathe in that thing? No, but if I if I sit, sit up, what do you guys think? Look. So one lucky winner will be wearing that shirt. Yeah, maybe not this one. Maybe we'll burn this one. Uh, anyway, that's that's the show for this week. Uh, I'm gonna regret this. Uh, we'll see you guys on Tuesday for another episode of Today on the Spot. I gotta get this thing off right now. You probably it's should. Killing it's killing me. It's killing me. It's killing me. Do you need Do you want scissors? Ah! Hey, what's up, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Today on the Spot. I'm Brian Eckberg. This is Sophia. T <laughs> so it was going so well. Okay, I was feeling really good about Sophia's answers. <laughs> I can fake it again. Okay. Downloadable content's all the rage these days. That's, isn't that right, Bob? <laughs> I'll see you at the country club, you scumbag. Maybe we can have some cigars with and talk about small small boys. All right.